top 10 things that you cannot live without at your home bow shop, you know, after the pandemic, after, you know, really just an evolution of the pandemic and online resources of working on your own equipment. More and more people are just getting like, you know, a garage bow shop, a basement bow shop. Even I've seen guys like rig out an entire room, like in their house, just like a bow shop. So uh, I, if you guys watch my videos before, you know that I have rigged out. This is an external shop from my house and rigged it out pretty much. I don't think there's one thing I've really wanted that a bow shop wouldn't, you know, fortunately, uh, either between working with companies or, or just buying them myself, I've been able to just rig out a complete bow shop. So we're gonna go over the top 10 things you must have in your home bow shop. There's a lot, you know, it's like Ryan and I were making this list. There is a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff you can upgrade to. There's a lot of simple things you can get, but yeah, let's roll into it. So this table is kind of like my workstation. I probably would only have one of these if we weren't doing videos. We kind of have like the, the video bench and then this is, this is the workbench. Like if I'm in here by myself, I'm working on this one. So with this is a really good light. I really can't stress how important a good light is to make sure the quality of like your fletching jobs or, or anything you're doing is really good. So I don't even know what kind of light this is. It's a ARBE machine manufacturing, but it's got a dial adjustment on it. Um, it's obviously adjustable. It doesn't need to be extensive, but just some sort of light. Cause if you turn this off, like doing a sight tape or anything like in this lighting conditions would just be tough. So a light it's overlooked, but it's really important. Next, probably the easiest thing to get into for a DIY is to fletch your own arrows. There's multiple fletching jigs you can get. There's some boning ones. There's uh, this Dial O Fletch Fletch Master from Bits and Burger, which is probably the most fan favorite. I have a Last Chance Vein Master Pro over here. This is definitely a definitely a higher end, a couple hundred dollars. This is like eighty dollars, yeah, like hundred dollars, like something like that, right around a hundred, give or take you need a, a good fletching jig along with glue. So I guess this is kind of like a two piece one, but a fletching jig can't live without it for a DIY bow shop. Still over in the arrow making corner is a good torch. This torch, you know, you turn it on and you can just kind of roll with it. If you're messing around with like a, a lighter or anything, you're just gonna not love life for a while. But I can just run this thing and you know, do glue in tips, glue in inserts, whatever. Really important. This wasn't even that expensive. I think like 20 bucks or something in this whole setup. Really important you got one of these. Arrows. I think arrows, arrows are just the easiest to tinker on. So we're, we're really covering arrows. I have an arrow saw here. I actually did a Lancaster unboxing on this a long time ago. This is like $130, I think. It's really cheap and it's really good. Micro adjustable all around, um, replaceable blades. You do large adjustments here. You can do small adjustments on the side. You got blade adjustment in and out here. Then you got a foot pedal running down. It's just always good to go. If you can cut your own arrows, you fletch them with your fletching jig, use the torch to put it in. You can do whatever you want. You can, you can build whatever arrows you want. So those three things, you know, hundred or $250 probably, you could get, you could get that done. The next three things, are pretty important like you really can't work on bows without them and that is i'm counting this as one category but a good set of allen wrenches and a good set of torque wrenches that's kind of like kind of obvious but you don't think about it like i actually have a lot of these because i'm always losing them i have like a travel one i have one that runs in my bow case and i have one here and then i have like an extra one so you really can't go wrong with a couple pairs of these. And then you always, you know, especially if, if you if you run Hoyts, I know they run this, but you're always running into something where you need some sort of torque wrenches. So we got we got one here, always must have it. On, on top of that, I have some better ones over here, which are kind of T-handles. So if you wanna go all out, a T-handle set is great. One of these is great. And then what's even better is like some one-off single ones. Um, like if you're doing, uh, like the sidebar, tighten down the sidebar, it's good to have that extra leverage in there. Allen wrenches, the most used tool though, for sure in archery, so Allen wrenches do not skimp on. Next, what we have is a draw scale. This is important, especially if you're tinkering on, um, you know, bows, uh, drawing just different poundages and stuff. It's really easy, this is the last chance uh, HS3, works really good. It's a handheld one, 
you turn it on, you draw it back, you let down, and then you look at the numbers right there. So works really good. This is this is pretty cheap too. Really good tool to add to your tool bench, and uh, works really really good. Next, another last chance archer. Last chance archer makes a lot of uh, really good, just like tinkering technical, you know, at home archery stuff. Uh, but it's a scale, a scale for your arrows. Um, could be a scale for you know your tips, your inserts, uh, quality checks between you know knocks, insert tips. Broadheads, you know, if you want to really fine tune, make sure all your broadheads are the same weight. Uh, make sure your arrows are the same weight. It works. I, I, we use them all the time. Like you use it all the time, especially if you're tinkering with arrows. Tinkering with a, your bow your, yourself, you really don't need this. But when it comes to arrows, broadheads, tips, stuff like that, you use this all the time. And also, what's a must-have is this little, little plastic piece that the that the tip actually lays in, so it doesn't roll off like that so you, you need to have this little little plastic piece little pro tip you can just make one too if you, if you lose it or don't have one so next this is this is your workhorse you know so you have your arrow station and then you have your bow station and your bow press is considered your bow station there's a lot of presses out there um, this is probably the most expensive part of like an at-home bow shop setup the one I have is is the deluxe one you know I work on a lot of bows so I kind of went all out um, I have the power pedals down low it goes in and out you can rotate it this way you can rotate it this way you can you can do everything on it but there's a lot of simple versions of this last chance archery press this is a last chance archery press probably in my opinion the best consumer press um, there's like the X press and everything but those like pressure on the limbs and this especially for matthews they fit right in the the limb upper limb cups they literally make it for this press um so i love this press but there's a lot of versions you can get even just a bolt on so you can just like bolt it onto the side of this table or this workbench so let's say you just have one workbench well you can literally have one workbench, you have an aero station, and then you bolt on to the side a good little bow press. And they have crank ones, so you, you crank it on the side. Um, you don't have power, so you don't even need power to do it. But a bow press, super important that you don't really get a chi like a chintzy Amazon one. I don't even know if Amazon has one, do they? I don't know. I would get a good name brand. You don't want your bow blowing up. There's a lot of pressure when you're pressing these bows. It's actually kind of dangerous. Like you want to make sure you're doing it well and do your double checks, checking your cables and everything. Um, on top of this, some good little, this is kind of outside of, this is one, but inside of it is a couple little things. There's these magnetic trays that you can clip right on. They hold everything, peeps, screws. I probably need to clean up these Allen wrenches eventually. Um, I have this little tool container so it has this i've lost the rest of these tools over time but they're probably just thrown down in there somewhere and then this guy this is actually really really convenient i de loop a couple different serving colors and thicknesses and i just taped an arrow to the side of this and these are just pegged right through it because you can just push it right through really convenient i use this all the time i'm so glad i don't have to like go somewhere else to do it um but it works really really good Next, really important, item number nine. We have, and you've probably seen in a lot of my bow builds, but a third axis leveler. Now this is really important if you're doing any sort of long distance or really any sort of shooting outside of just 20 yards. If you're doing farther distances, side hills, uphill, downhill, tree stand, you need a third axis leveler for your sight. This is one I really like. It's the bright sight third axis leveler. Um, it's really simple, like the construction is simple, but it really gets the job done and it gets the job done uh, to get a good ground basis. If I'm setting up like a, you know, my main hunting bow or, or my main target bow for like an event like Redding, I'd probably go another step and do some checking at full draw. But this gets you really, really close, um, really simple. Any sort of dovetail or even any any sort of bolt-in sight because you can bolt it right in the side. Um, I don't even know how much this is. I've had this for a long time, but really important, especially if you're shooting farther distances, up or down. You know, and, and the thing is about this is you need to check it several times throughout the, even the season, the year, because this gets bumped easily. Your second and third axis can get bumped. If you're gonna like drop your bow out of a stand or out of a truck, your third axis or second axis is really the first thing to get messed up. It's like your peep sight gets moved or your second and your third axis get moved. Like every time, I don't know why. 
Last but not least is the paper tuner. The final steps of building your bow, setting your bow up all over, over there is getting a rough tune on it before you go outside and do some more tuning. So I've actually rigged this up. This is a, uh, a like a consignment store sign. And then I've rigged up this roll in here, put a piece of D loop just so it's a little tighter, clamp it down. It's really kind of janky but it actually is really good. It gets a job done. I've known a lot of guys that made it out of like PVC. Um, you know, you can, you can make the same thing out of PVC. This is just a roll of paper I got from Amazon. Um, I've I had a couple different kinds. I, I forget what this is exactly, but you want it thin. Uh, wax paper works really well too. And you can rig up, you can, you really have to use your imagination and your, and your handyman skills for a paper tuner. I don't know of a really good one that you can just buy. I've seen all sorts. I've seen even paper tune or uh, like, uh, what is this called? Chronograph. Wow, I just had a brain fart. They put a little nine or a little sheet of paper right here, and they'll just shoot through that and stuff, which works fine. Um, but it's really nice that you can just keep pulling it, cutting it down, and whatever. Um, and I guess a bag with that is really important too. Somewhere where you can work on your bow, shoot it through paper, work on your bow, shoot it through paper. It's really important and uh, really vital, I guess, to be efficient with it. So that's kind of my top 10 must-haves for your at-home pro shop build, I guess. I've had mine for about just over a year now, the final version of it. Keeps evolving, you know, we keep adding stuff, um, trying to be more efficient with it, especially with the amount of bows and tinkering that I do. Um, so it's really important. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to check out Be Real Merch. Dot com. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to snag a hat. We got stickers, we got stabilizers back in stock. We got grips. We even have some Ultra products. So make sure you check it out and we'll catch you guys in the next one.